Judge Rodriguez with the Ninth Judicial Circuit's court is back to explain more about the guardianship process in Florida. Today we'll be looking at who can manage the affairs of a ward. And yes, we've talked about those couple of terms, guardianship, ward, but who can technically, legally be a guardian? Well, that's a complex issue <laughs> we're going to try to simplify because we're going to take a resident ward or protected person. Right. A person who is a resident of the county, uh, say for example, we're in Orange County, mm -hmm. Orange County. Osceola is part of our circuit, mm -hmm. Osceola County. All right. In order to be a ward, obviously, well, in order to be a guardian, mm -hmm. you have to generally reside in the county or practice okay. in the county. Um, any member of the family can wind up being a guardian, but there are going to be requirements of education. Usually yeah. it's a four, an eight hour course that is provided by Seniors First here in Orlando. Okay, they are the public guardian. Yeah, that's what so, I wonder. So they provide that type of education. Uh, so there is a training oh, yes. for people to go and through. And part of that education requires that they know and they understand what documents need to be filed on a yearly basis, like an annual report, an annual mm -hmm. accounting, annual inventory, those types of things that show that, well, accountability, that the guardian is accountable to make sure that the expenses that are being made on behalf of the ward protected mm -hmm. person are being in fact made on behalf of the protected person and no one else. But a family member can be, mm -hmm. a professional guardian can be, and a professional guardian has even more stricter requirements. Mm -hmm. A 40 hour course to begin with, with continuing ah. education on a yearly basis, with um, the requirement that they post a blanket bond with the Department of Elder Affairs uh, for $50,000. Um, so again, bonding them to make sure that they are going to go ahead and follow uh, through. Um, they also take a license in order for them to be licensed as uh, professional guardians, they will have to take a statewide exam and pass it. Otherwise, they do not become professional guardians. Right. Generally, so, mm -hmm. what we will wind up doing is we'll look to family first, or we would look at the type of assets that the individual has to determine if we, we can let someone from the family who perhaps is a certified public accountant or has specific knowledge to what mm -hmm. this individual needs. For example, if it's a guardian of the person and a guardian of the person only, if you've got somebody that's a nurse at home that has that type of knowledge, uh, then obviously that person would be a good guardian. Right, and so many times I think people do have, maybe they don't have adult children living close to them or you know someone they would feel comfortable in that type of role, that there actually is, and, and guardians can be paid. I understand. Absolutely. Professional guardians generally are. Um, family guardians or individuals who are also working as guardians for, uh, but not professional mm -hmm. guardians, they can have costs reimbursed. So long as the costs are approved by the court and they are reasonable. The court is going to look at the standard of what is in the best interest of the ward protected person. If it's not in the best interest, like for example, you're asking what? Uh, we build a swimming pool? Oh. <laughs> what about the exactly. Y? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are That's the services right. available at the Y as opposed to building a swimming pool? And then of course you take into consideration, is this individual wealthy and is the individual not mobile mm -hmm. that taking them to the Y would be a diff? So they're just a bunch of bunch of variables that need to be considered. And, and it certainly has been, you know, cleared up for a very complicated subject, but we do appreciate it. Judge Rodriguez, thank you so much for explaining the role of a guardian. This interview is part of a series of interviews with Judge Rodriguez about guardianship in Florida.